For the last hundred or so years, when you're going to build a house in North America, you make a call to the lumber yard and they drop off a pile of sticks like this. The problem with traditional framing though is everywhere you've got a stud, you've got a huge inefficiency in your wall. You've got a huge thermal bridge in your wall. On the build show today, I'm going to show you a brand new type of framing you have never seen before. Today's video is sponsored by T-Stud. Let's get going. Okay, so first let's look at traditional lumber. Standard two by six right here. What's the problem with that? I've built a lot of houses out of two by six. Very strong, but the problem is about 25% of our house ends up being wood and wood is not particularly good at insulating. You'd never build your cooler out of wood, would you? This is roughly our 6.8, whereas the cavity in between our 16 inch studs, we're gonna put, let's say an R19 bat in there. So compared to the center, this stud is very, very inefficient. Now in today's video, we're about to take a tour of this house that's been framed with this brand new product that I have never seen before. This is called the T-Stud. And this is what it looks like in the naked version. What you're looking at basically is a truss. You've got a two by three on both sides and it's connected structurally with dowels. And then what they do is at the factory, they actually use closed cell spray foam in between there. So remember that two by six, that was an R 6.8. This is an R 20. Can you imagine that? This is as good as that cavity with that R 19 bat. So now we have no need for exterior insulation, that big blanket that I talk about putting on all those houses, because the studs themselves are not conducting the heat through, R20. That's pretty cool. All right, without further ado, let's go out in the house and actually show you what it looks like on a whole house framed with a T-stud. Okay, let's start here, guys. This is an uncomplicated part of the house. We're in the bonus room above the garage, and this, I think, is gonna give you the basics on what the T-stud's all about. So first off, they've run these on 24 inch on center marks. And you can see this is that T-stud. This is actually five and a half inches deep. So the same depth as a standard two by six. And then here on the front though, this is where it differs. We're actually two and a half inches wide on the flange. So in effect, it's a two by three with another two by three and then those dowel rods. And you can see here, they come to the job site in a pallet already foamed in the center. But if you look at this from a wide angle, you can see what I really like about the system. We've got a single bottom plate right here. You've got studs on 24 inch centers. And then you also have a single top plate on here with the T-stud as well. Because that T-stud is a truss, you've got a lot more strength. And we're gonna to talk to the inventor in a minute. We'll tell us the specifics. But I love how if you look at this exterior wall right here, you basically have that foam that's in the center all the way down the wall. And that's how they're able to get these into an R20. So now when we put R19 bats in, let's say, on this two by six, you actually have more insulation value at your studs than in your cavity, which is totally different. Now the electricians have just started on this house. And there's also a couple of interesting things when it comes to electrical. The electrician's actually just gonna poke through here because there is a void and he can do that with a screwdriver and then all he's gonna do is stab his wire through, no drill necessary. Now in this case, we've got framing below us. So they're fastening with these screws right here because we've got that two and a half inch wide bottom plate. You can't use just the standard 16 penny nail. You actually need at least an inch of embedment. So you'll see they've staggered these screws and they've screwed them down. Now in other parts of the house where we're on concrete slab on grade, they're gonna have a J bolt that's gonna come up in the center of this foam here. And then they've got a big wide plate that's gonna go on top of that so that that J bolt will transfer its hold down power to this bottom, or pardon me, to the kind of top and bottom cord, so to speak on this T-stud. And then where walls come together, it looks like the framers framed this wall here separate from this wall. They've, they've put a strap. You're gonna see that on typical standard top plate or single top plate uh, type framed, advanced framed houses. And that's what they've done here is they put a strap there. They've also done that in this corner here where they've strapped the corner together and they framed this with it, what we call a California corner. So this wood right here is just gonna hold drywall up. 
and they've done a good job of holding that back a little bit inside the corner so that insulation can go all the way back through. Man, what a totally wild, totally different system that I'm used to seeing. Okay, this is something interesting too. They've used it for headers. Let's look at this one first. So we've got a, looks like an eight foot patio door right here. Um, no, bigger than that. It's actually a nine foot patio door. Now we're on a gable end right here, so we don't have a lot of load, but look what they've used. They've used T-studs for the headers as well. So in effect, you've got an insulated header. They've run these, that horizontal uh, single top plate all the way down, and then they've got three T-studs acting as a header. Same with these windows over here. If you look at these windows over here, they've got a single T-stud in the center, which again is insulated. That's that R20 stud. And then they basically just pack the cavity. The framer said that it was actually easier to do it this way than it was to put a bunch of small cripples in there. So again, you've got that continuous top plate all the way across there. And then here they've got their king stud and their jack stud. And those two right there are helping with load as well. And then these two studs that are in here, they're basically just drywall nailers. They're just holding it. But again, because it's an R20, they're providing insulation. So now you've got an insulated structural header. You can basically eliminate all of your normal lumber that you might use for headers. So your LSLs, your LVLs, all those things that we might have to build in the field in a sandwich capacity with some insulation in between, you can eliminate that and you do that with a T-stub. Pretty cool, what, an, what a uh, unique system. Simple, yet uh, something I've never seen before. Pretty wild. Let's go grab Jesse the builder and see what he thinks about these. Hey guys, I'm here with the builder of this house, Jesse. Jesse, thanks for having me on your job, man. My pleasure. Is this your first time using T-studs? Uh, this is not, this is probably our 15th time using T-studs. We've wow. been uh, solid T-studs for a little over two years now. Dang, and yeah. did you tell me earlier that your own house was a T-stud house that you built? That's correct, about two, a uh, little over two years ago, my own personal house was the first T-stud house built. Wow, the first T-Stud house. So two years later, what's it been like? Uh, you know, as a builder, the biggest difference I've noticed and come to appreciate is the fact that we've got, in this freeze-thaw cycle we've got up here in Minnesota, you, you tend to get your builder callbacks on your nail pops, your uh, sheetrock settling and things like that. And we've yeah. seen a drastic uh, reduction in any of those kind of callbacks. Interesting. So we love so that So your one-year marker, when you're normally going back to fix that stuff, a lot less because of this. What do you attribute to that, do you think? Yeah, for us, I think it's, it's got to be the stability of the T-stud and the thermal break in there. Traditional wood studs are, uh, in this climate, you know, you're building in the rain, you're building in the snow, those things just tend to dry out and they can buckle on you. Uh, so for us, we've just seen a lot of stability with these studs. Jesse, what'd your framer think about this? Either the <laughs> first time or now 15 houses later? Yeah, well, we've got a couple different framing crews and uh, like anything in this industry, guys move a little slower. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the first time they saw this, there was definitely some uh, uh, swear words, uh, but by the second or third house, they were jumping at the bit to get to another T-stud house, and they've uh, really come to appreciate the, the the differences in the framing, the lightness of the walls, Interesting. Uh, and so they're actually able to feed uh, frame uh, T-stud houses a little bit quicker than they can do a traditional house. Because of the less weight, that's kind of cool. Uh, less wood, framing two feet on center versus 16 on center, single okay. top plate. Um, so yeah, so they've, uh, they can stand up longer walls with uh, less guys. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. You got a single top plate too, so now that wall's a little lighter because you've got a little less uh, weight overall, two foot centers, single top plate, that's cool. <laughs> now tell me about uh, call though. You know, when we get a typical SPF framing package, let's say, there's at least, you know, 5% of those studs that go back to the lumber yard or in the trash or cut up for blocking. What's your, what's your waste factor on these? Uh, with the T studs, you know, we're probably looking at less than 1%. Uh, rarely do we send one back. And if we do get a little bit of twist in there, then we just end up using it for a cripple under a window or something like that, so. Okay, so very little waste, that's cool. Hey guys, I'm here with the inventor of the T-Stud, Brian Iverson. Now Brian, I know people watching this video at this point are thinking, can this really replace a two by six for its structural value? What would you say to that? Uh, I can tell you that it's, we're actually four times stronger. A two by six, no matter if they're made out of LVL or LSL, mm -hmm. all fail, they call this the X-axis, they all fail in the X-axis because they bend out of deflection if you get too much of a load on it. Because so when we're pressuring down, that's, that's wanting to curve out, basically. Exactly. So because we turn the boards perpendicular, we stop the ability of the board to deflect under a load in that x-axis anymore. So now the only way we fail is just like a tree standing in the forest. It, we want the weight to go straight down. 
so we actually go take the weight all the way down. So we're actually certified to hold 8,600 pounds versus only about 2,200 pounds for a two by six and about 900 pounds for a two by four. Wow, quite a bit stronger, Brian. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I can admit it was impressive. A two footer held uh, 30, 36,000 pounds. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Yep. Now, Brian, when I look around the house, I don't see that there's any color difference between bottom plates and studs. Are you selling pressure treated or, or how are we keeping termites, rot, that kind of thing happening at the bottom plates? Uh, we're gonna start uh, treating all of our products with next gen. So it's a four in one solution, rot, mold, uh, fire and termite all in one. Wow. So you'll have the option to buy them uh, with all treated or just the plain T-studs by themselves. So you could actually get a class A rated T-stud, is that right? That's right. Now, Brian, tell me about options. This is the T-stud they used here, which is basically like a two by six replacement. What are the other options we could buy from you? Okay, so this, we call this the bare naked T-stud. Mm -hmm. So it's the same frame. If you're gonna do uh, spray foam in the cavity, you can spray us in, in, the, in the field itself. So that- So frame the house with the naked T-stud, no insulation in already. So this is in the wall. Correct. And then this is your demo to show that, right? So Correct. here's your sheathing on the outside. The T-stud now is here. And so then you could spray from the bottom plate, let's say from your slab, spray in between and continuous from the slab all the way to the roof line, right? Correct, and you run, put the bare naked T-studs in, run all your electrical wiring, security system, whatever you want to run through. So you can run everything you want to through there and then spray foam us in in the field. So you can either do, you know, one, two, three inches or all five and a quarter inches of foam, whatever, however you want to see that. And that way you have solved for almost all of your um, transitions of where you could potentially have air leaks yeah. coming into that cavity. Plus Correct. if you've got two pound spray foam that you're spraying that with, you're adding a ton of structure, right? You, I've seen tests before with, with two inches of closed cell foam and just half inch sheathing where a two by four shot out of a hundred mile an hour cannon will bounce off. So my guess is you're gonna add a lot of hurricane tornado resistant to the house as well if you did this method. So we're already hurricane compliant and seismic compliant by ourselves with just this T-stud. This T-stud, we know that we're gonna be able to pass all the hurricane testing without the sheathing on. That's pretty amazing. And then tell me about this guy right here. We actually did the Boston Passive House Conference and they have asked us for an R30 T-stud because they wanna get rid of all the staggered stud walls. Dang, so this is an R30 version, R30? which would replace basically a two by eight, right? We're, we are equal in strength to a two by eight in a wall up to 16 feet tall with Dang. that. But we only have five inches of fiber. Wow, that's pretty cool. In our value of 30. So we actually heated up that wood member to 200 degrees and we had no transfer to the other side after eight hours. Wow, that's pretty neat. So that's, that's sick. It's impressive, Brian. I gotta say, I've never heard of this before. <laughs> Thoroughly intriguing. So for people watching this video, whether you're someone who's about to build a house or a builder, how do we buy this? How do we get a hold of your product? Uh, you have a couple of options. You can uh, have your lumber yard contact us and mm -hmm. we'll set them up as a stocking dealer right away. Okay. Uh, if there's nobody stocking in the area, we will bundle up whatever that you need to have and we're gonna ship it to you direct. Just have a forklift there to pick it off. And uh, so we'll ship directly out of Canada down. Um, or we'll send partial loads to the lumber yard. We'll do whatever it takes to get the T-studs out there. That's pretty cool. So how do people contact you, Brian? What's the best way to get a hold of you guys? Uh, sales at tstud.com, the letter T, then stud.com. Is and the your website way. is tstud.com yep, too, right? tstud.com, Brett. And can you guys help builders out there? Let's say if I've got a house coming up in two months, I'm gonna pour a slab for, um, can you guys help do the takeoffs if I've got a traditionally uh, framed house and convert that to a T-stud takeoff? Yeah, we'll, we'll do those right away. We'll actually try to halfway try to compare um, ourselves to a two by six or whatever that you were going to do, especially when it comes to U-value calculations or the average R-value. We can show you uh, the U-value through this. For those of you who are educated, the, the U-value for this is 0 0.0323. Brian, last question. I know people are gonna be asking cost. Tell me about, let's say a standard 2,500 square foot house What's the delta? How much more are we gonna pay for a T-stud compared to traditional lumber? Okay, so the average house in North America, 2,500 square feet. So we're um, $1,000 to $1,500 extra 
versus a two by six. Wow. Um, so the more complex the house, the obviously the more cost you have involved. We have a couple of 2,800 square foot, uh, two story houses going right now, full basement walkouts. They're extremely complex, 10 foot on the main floor, second floor, nine feet tall, mm -hmm. and we're 5,000 extra. And that's the retail price today. That's amazing. And then there's going to be some deducts, right? I mean, my guess is with an R20 stud, you're probably going to use less of a heating and cooling system. Uh, you may you may be able to forego the geothermal that you might have might have wanted for efficiency because now you really don't need it. You could use more standard, let's say, VRF equipment. Um, you're going to get fantastic air tightness when you couple this with a, a Huber zip system on the exterior, right? Because we've got a really tight envelope. It's impressive stuff, guys. Thanks, Brian, for having me out for sponsoring today's video. What an incredible trip from Texas up here to Minnesota to see what these guys are doing. Check out tstud.com. If you're not familiar with my videos, we've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Hit that subscribe button below. Otherwise, follow us on Twitter or Instagram. We'll see you next time on The Build Show.